We are now ready to sew the crotch curve. This version will not have a gusset. It is just a simple crotch curve. I'm gonna start with one leg being wrong side out and the other leg being right side out. I like to stick my arm into the right side out leg like a sleeve and then I put my whole arm holding onto the hem into the legging or the other leg and then I'm going to line up at the top edge. I'm going to line up my full seat seam so that when I open them, they match. I'm gonna go around and match the front. And the seam on the other end, other side of the full seat. Give it a bit of a shake so that the legs settle into each other. And continue to match the crotch curve and pin. So around the crotch curve, using your selected seam allowance. Now that both legs are all sewn up, it's time to move on to the crotch. We are going to add an oval gusset to this pair. The oval gusset will be shaped like this. And there are three notches in the crotch curve that correspond to the start, end, and center point of the gusset. I'm going to start by lining up the center marking and then turn the gusset and it will pull the pant and that's okay to line up the back and then pull again and line up the front and then sew from the first notch to the last notch using your selected seam allowance This is the leg that has the gusset already attached. We're going to take the other leg and turn it right side out, or right side in, wrong side out. Take the first leg with the gusset attached and put it onto your arm like a sleeve. Hold the hem and slide it into the other pant. We're gonna match the gusset at, or the crotch curve at the top. Top of the other side. And then I'm gonna shake it down in so that it settles in nicely. We have the center mark of the gusset here and the center point because we have our same three notches going to start by matching right sides together the center notch with the center of the gusset. Then I'm going to match the first notch. And I'm going to, you'll see that the seam kind of dips like that. I'm going to press the seam 
back towards the seam to close up that space. I'm gonna repeat that same thing on the last notch. So I'm pushing the seam towards the seam we're about to sew. And line up the rest of the crotch curve. Then you will sew the whole crotch curve. When you get to the gusset, go up and around and all the way to the end of the gusset or the crotch curve. We're going to sew the whole crotch curve using your selected seam allowance. With the crotch curve sewn, it is now time to work on our waistband. This waistband is the high-low waistband. I've chosen to have a high in the front and low in the back, but you can have it the opposite. The back will be where the seam goes though, whether it is the high or the low. The high-low waistband is made up of two pieces that get sewn together first at the back seam and then with one inside the other along this edge. Let's start by matching the back seam. We're gonna pin it and then sew using your selected seam allowance. We're going to turn our lining fabric right side out and stick it inside our main fabric, matching at the seam. And I like to redu reduce bulk in this seam area by putting the seams right next to each other and putting one to the left and one to the right and then pushing them up against each other. Match the center front and then pin around Sew along the top edge using your selected seam allowance. It is time to turn your waistband right sides out and then fold the lining again to the inside. When you get to the back seam, make sure that the seams are still pointing in opposite directions. I like to put a couple pin clips along the top just to keep things from shifting while I work with the waistband later.
Mark the waistband at center front, center back, and then quarter the waistband by lining up the center front and center back and marking the sides. On our riding tights, the center front is going to line up with this, the front crotch seam. Center back will line up with the back seam. And on my tights, the side seams will line up with the quarter points. If yours don't line up the front and back crotch seam at the raw edge and walk your fingers down until you reach here and that will be your quarter point. I'm going to put my waistband in right sides together. Line up the center front with my front crotch. Center back the seam with the crotch seam. and the quarter points with the side seams. Then you will sew using your selected seam allowance. Your band will be smaller than the space it needs to fill in your riding tights. So as you go, stretch the band to match the riding tight. I like to have my riding tights on the bottom and the band on the top so that I can make sure I'm stretching only the band and not stretching the tights. Now that the waistband's attached, we can take off these extra clips. And I like to investigate and make sure that I have caught my waistband all the way around and I didn't miss a spot in the waist. You can choose to top stitch the seam down, but I'm going to skip that right now. For this pair of riding tights, I'm using the V waistband. There are two options for the V waistband, a V and a double V. For this pair, I am just doing a single V, but I did want it to be a finished height of five inches. So I have my pattern piece here, and I have marked the notches that are for the center back. This will be center front, and then these two will line up with the side panels that we've sewn. So first, going to open it up and then fold it in half, wrong sides together. And then I'm going to pin or clip along the length so that it stays folded in half. Now that I have my V waistband all pinned in half and I've transferred all of the markings, it's time to fold the V to create the waistband. This point is gonna match up with the corresponding point on the opposite side.
and then the waist, the rest of the V will extend out. I'm gonna put my side panel marking back in. with my writing tights, wrong side out. I'm going to take the waistband upside down so that the I can match the raw edges. I'm gonna match center back. I'm gonna tuck the waistband down inside and then mark center front. The center front is going to go right at this point. When you select the V waistband, your the front of your riding tights is going to be angled to accommodate this V. Now we're going to go back to our notches. The one closest to the front is going to be the front of the side panel, and the one after that will be to the back of the side panel. After sewing off the V, clip into the seam allowance right at the V, but not through it. Leave at least one needle intact. And it is time now to hem our writing tights. In the generator, you will select the width you would like your hem to be. I chose one inch, so I'm going to use my seam gauge set to one inch to help make sure that I have gotten the correct hem allowance. Once it's right, I'm gonna clip it into place Repeat for the other leg and using your sewing machine with a stretch stitch or your cover stitch, sew the hem.
I'm using my reverse cover stitch and that is why I am starting with the right side with my pants right side out and folding to the wrong side. If you're using a regular sewing machine, you can do this the opposite way. Or if you're using your needles on the right side instead of the looper, then you would have the writing tights inside out. 